Hey everybody, welcome back. We are here with Anne-Marie. Laurie, Anne-Marie, thank you for coming today. Thank you. I'm so, you know, we're so grateful to have you because there's, the whole time that Anne-Marie's been with Crab, there isn't a single time where we've said we'd love to have her here to talk about something and you've never said no and I don't even think that you've ever not been available when we needed you. So I'm sure you're in very high demand, so thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, we wanted Anne-Marie here, so obviously you guys probably would have seen her last at the Crab forecast, but it's been a little while, I guess, mm -hmm. since then. Technically, it's only been a couple of months, but lots of things happened. So we wanted you here. Um, you know, the, the media headlines are one thing, and the media, I, I used to be in PR, loves when the economy is bad because nobody has to look for a story because there's always a story. <laughs> so we wanted you here to chat, to chat a little bit about kind of what you see in our economy right now, how you see oil affecting things. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to chat with you about, too, was what other industries are actually doing well and potentially impacting our economy? I think with just oil right now, everybody only talks about oil, but there's a lot of other factors that play into the economy and ultimately how you see all of that going in real estate. So I guess to start off with a kind of blanket statement, um, calories economy in your perspective right now. Um, well, lots cha has changed. So, and in fact, when I'm looking at this from my perspective, I'm actually seeing that things have gotten a lot worse than what was originally expected in January. Right. So oil prices, we have to think back to January, they're expected to average $50 a year. I think some of those forecasts now have been scaled yeah. back further. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now, you know, even at $40, and the challenge with this is, and, and just focusing on the oil part for now, is that a lot of these companies budgeted on $50 oil. So right. that does have an implication on further either layoffs or further rollbacks in wages, and that, that filters through. So when we talk about other aspects of the market, what I'm looking at is, is we're starting to see spillover effects. So mm -hmm. we're starting to see an impact the retail. We're starting to see an impact construction, other sectors of the market. Um, so this year is still a higher transition, and then we also have to think about those other factors. So employment we've seen has been falling. You know, we're starting to see, we continue to see job losses on aggregate across the board in the city. And on top of that, unemployment rates have risen to levels really not seen since the 90s, early 90s. Right. Um, and the concern is, is when you have this higher level of unemployment, I mean, we're hitting about over 8% in Calgary, and you don't have the employment gains, then that creates longer period of challenges. Okay, so while there might be some other opportunities in other industries, it's not offsetting the losses that are starting to be felt in the other sectors as well. I mean, we've seen it in the construction industry. Now, if there's enough change in, let's say, government, well, the government budget did come out and they did indicate that, you know, they're going to spend on infrastructure spending and things like that, that can help offset some of the losses that we're seeing, but right. it takes time for those things to filter through. Right. Um, other changes that we've seen as well is, I mean, a lot of those forecasts that came out at the beginning of the year, they've been downgraded. So we're now expected to be in a recession, not just from last year, but this year as well. And that's another change. Um, so... No, not that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so obviously, obviously, and I want to ask you at the end here, you know, what other fact, what else needs to happen? But let's talk about oil for a second, yeah, because it's such a big, uh, plays such a big role in this. Um, knowing the information happened on Sunday mm -hmm. or yesterday, that was yesterday. Um, what do you see now for oil prices for the rest of the year? And knowing that it's just a, I mean, mm. is it up in the air? Anyone's guess right now? I mean, essentially what is expected, and I mean, that's the best we can do. What right. is expected for the year, it were, the current forecasts are in and around the $40 range, 40 to $42 average for a year. And you have to keep in mind that, again, people budget at 50, so yep. it's a lot lower than was originally expected. Yep. Um, and even though the variation in oil prices is well known, um, that happens all the time. I, I really sympathize with anybody who has to forecast oil out there. Um, <laughs> yep. and, but with no change in the supply side of the, that equation, then how can oil prices start to rise? So we need to start to see a shift from the people who can actually control the price, which right. is not us. Right. Um, so you need to see these agreements between the Saudis and the Russians and things like that to happen before you can start to see a fundamental shift. And don't forget that we're also getting the Western Canadian select price which is also steeply discounted from the WTI and the Brent price. Um, and they've faced, like they've been seeing their margins widen as well. So it's, overall it's a challenge. And I mean, we are one of the higher cost producing regions and it's affecting us. As far as real estate goes, have you noticed the unemployment rate? I mean, one of the things we haven't seen is that everybody's house is not for sale. No. Right, so I mean, they, we, is there mass exodus in terms of, uh, there's so many people that came here moving. I was talking to somebody on the weekend 
who you know knew somebody who moved to Calgary for oil and gas and is now moving back to Nova Scotia and bought a house. And he's like, oh my God, like if you're moving back to Nova Scotia for work, like what does that mean for Calgary? Um, but how does how has that affected things? Well, when we look at how it translates into housing, I mean, first thing you got to think of, when people have lost their jobs, they're not going to sell their homes right away. Their homes are the last things that they'll let go. And keep in mind, we have unemployment benefits, things like that, so people can withstand a period of time. That's why we've often said the duration of how long this lasts is important for the impact on housing. Right. So what we have seen is that to a certain extent, yes, our inventories have increased. We're in that 6,000 range. We're not as high as we were back in 07. Okay, back in that time frame, we were closer to that 10,000 range. So we still have less inventory on the market. Yeah. The challenge has been the impact on demand. So sales have actually been falling, and they're at you know, levels that we haven't seen in many, many years. Okay, so you know, we're seeing levels of sales activity almost lower than what we saw in 07, and depending on how the year shapes up. Um, you know, that's what we continue to watch. So because you have a lot less sales activity, even with, you know, the Decreasing fact that, supply. yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so the challenge will be is well, we've got to watch what's happening in those listings, new listings. So far, we actually haven't seen the new listings increase. Right. They continue to be at this level, similar to last year, a little bit lower, and that's been a good thing. So that's telling us that people aren't in the I must absolutely sell yet, and yet is the, really the key. So it depends on how long this continues, because as I said, when you've got that high level of unemployment rate, how long can people withstand this? Do you have an year? Do you, I was going to say, do you kind of have an opinion on that? So I mean, we saw a lot of layoffs start, I guess, mid fall last year. Yep. Um, would you kind of give it a year from that point until maybe we start seeing some fallout from that? I know that the yeah. government extended EI benefits for a couple of Absolutely. months, which will make a bit of a difference. Yeah, it'll help. So we have the fact that you have extended benefits. People have also had large packages often when they're let go. So that right. can help them with staying a longer period of time. So, yeah, I'd say you have about at least, you know, if you're estimating that, you know, look at the AI period, probably have about a year in around that range before people are having to make some of those decisions. Um, but there's also people who don't necessarily have to sell anyways. They're in a comfortable position. So it depends on what level of debt they got themselves into right. and how much they can withstand it. So, Do you see any other, you know, we talk everything about oil all the time. Do you yeah. see any of the industries that are factoring things coming into play Offsetting things, maybe agriculture is strong, maybe it's not. What, what do you see in terms of um, anything that's helping or just continuing to push the slide? Um, well, unfortunately, we don't have much else. Is it, is it oil? Is <laughs> it, so to, it is oil. We used to yeah. have oil and natural gas, and we know natural gas really didn't come back from 07. Yeah. Um, agriculture, while there, is been, there has been some gains in that area, it's such a small component yeah. that it's not enough to offset the losses that we're having in oil and gas. And, I, I've heard for years how more diversified we are, and I think going through this cycle is an indication that we're really not. Yeah. Right. Um, we're seeing that what truly the impact is. I mean, if we think back to 07, that's when natural gas fell, um, and natural gas used to be the main component of our revenues as far as the provincial was mm -hmm. concerned. Um, they never really came back, but a lot of those jobs were able to be absorbed through the oil sector. Right. So now, what's going to absorb these jobs? Yeah. Um, and then you're facing it in construction too, because you've got the new home side that you know they're are, they're scaling back, so their construction is is down lower. So, so where is it going to pick up? I mean, you need almost investment into new industries or opportunities for new people to come in, and even then, it takes time for that to filter into other industries. Well, that's been such a huge thing. I was I was listening to a report on the on, I'm a huge CBC fan in the mornings, um, but there was a big talk on the CBC this morning. And exactly what you said, being like, we need entrepreneurs, like any incentives that the government can do right now to get entrepreneurs into our marketplace, starting new businesses, um, this is the time to do it. But to your point, you're still looking at a year to two year turnover before that actually starts right. making a bit of a difference. But how important it is in general to always be focusing on having new businesses and entrepreneurial opportunities so that you always have that spike continuing. So. Yeah, and I mean, being more diversified will help you pr help you through the cycles. I mean, yeah. part of Calgary, we've seen this. We go through the boom and the bust, and, and the real estate does the same thing. We yeah. see the highs and the lows, and it's because we're driven by really one or two industries. Um, now, the other challenge that we face is because we're a higher income levels, it's a lot hard, harder for those new industries to get started because they're still right. having facing that higher level of income. Now, 
at this point, I would think that some of that might start to shift. I mean, people are starting to see their wages roll back, and that can actually potentially help some of these new industries that are looking for people. One so. of the things you and Lindsay were talking about um, before this meeting, to end on a positive note, because that's good, is there's actually some great opportunity, and you were talking about how you got into your current home last time mm -hmm. the market was like this, and you know opportunities that you've been looking at. So, um, you know, Lindsay, why don't you, from your perspective on some of the stuff that you've been chatting with realtors about, talk about, I guess, the move up market and then Anne-Marie, a little bit about what that looked like when you did it as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I just know that anytime you're supposed to buy low, look at any investment thing, buy yeah. low, sell high. So, I mean, anybody that looks out there and considered buying a house in 2009 or, or the start of 2010 uh, made a very smart decision because moving up, you know, prices have escalated since those points. And I look at it now and I just, I got this, you know, I'm looking to, we're considering, you know, a move back to Calgary versus, but it's got to be the right opportunity. But there's just more and more opportunities that suddenly come up right now. And if you have people who are working with investors or other things like that, it's just, and they want to get into the real estate market, there hasn't been a time like this since, you know, the end of 2009, started 2010, in my opinion. And you, you got to go back before then to like 04 type thing when you can actually, you know, buy a house at um, yeah. reasonable cost. And we talk about, you know, the price of wages and uh, the cost yeah. of, or the wages in Calgary uh, drive up home prices because people just buy more, they can afford to bid more and, and prices go up. And as we start seeing that shift, um, opportunities get created. So I just, as, as from an investment standpoint, I just love it. Yep. So, so the way I'm looking at it from my perspective, it's, you know, I don't, obviously I don't sell anything. So. Yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm looking at it going, well, for people who are in this market who are currently stable in their jobs, then yes, it absolutely can be an opportunity for them. If they have steady employment, they're not concerned about, you know, their employment in the next year, yeah. and they have a longer term vision for staying in the city, then that does create that opportunity for them to upgrade. That's exactly what I did. I mean, we knew that we were going to be here for the long haul, um, and we took advantage of the market when we could. Yeah. Now, at the same time, it also depends when you got into your first house, right? So what market did you, if you're buying and selling a house, where did you come into? So at totally. what entry point did you come in with your first Yeah, home? if you were in July of 2014, and now you're, <laughs> you're, not, you're exactly, not going to be moving yeah. to you know, And it also depends on what, what areas you're moving into. I mean, we often talk about, I mean, everyone knows I have aggregate stats. Aggregate stats don't show you everything. Um, what segment of the market are you moving from? Are you moving from an area that really hasn't been impacted as much? I mean, we've often said like areas in the Northeast. Well, they haven't seen their prices decline at the same right. rate as some of the potentially inner city detached homes, which are already at that higher end of the market. So it's important when you're anybody who's doing this to be looking at what segment are you going from and to where are you going? So what happened in that subsection of your market? Because we know the aggregate stats don't tell you everything. So are you moving from you know, an area that really hasn't been as impacted at this point and, and into another area that potentially has seen more of an impact? So it's always about that spread of where you've been. So I guess some advice for realtors would be to, if you have a client who's thinking of doing that, to really look at the statistics on the past five, ten years of housing prices in that area to do some sort of comparison when they got in. To really be Absolutely. Like, you're right. Like how much money have you actually spent? How much has this gone yes. up? What does that look like? Yeah, I, I mean, as someone who you know, is on the sales side, I mean, I don't sell real estate actively, but working with these realtors, you look and you, and you put it out there to the market. It's like, it's, there's segments for the right people, and there's opportunities for the right people out there, and you gotta go out there and find them. It's not like it's right for everybody right now to yep. be selling and stuff, so it's not like right. in 2014 we can just say, oh, you know, it's an incredible time to, to sell, and it's an incredible time. Well, I mean, if you're buying in a seller's market, it's tougher. But the, the point here is that you got to be putting out your feelers out there to find out who is well positioned for that. And that's where your deals are going to come from. Um, it's not going to just be like writing up orders anymore. And we've known this and we lived through this through 2015, the last year and a half. So those of you that are out there um, hustling is, is something that is going to make a big difference because you can actually find those people who are well positioned to make a move in this market. And the other ways that we're trying to support you with doing this is we are, even in the monthly stats, you'll see that actually next month will be a shift. Yes. Um, and it'll be a split out. So now all of a sudden you can get all that information by district and start to see. And I mean, it's always been available to members mm -hmm. on the back end, but at least it should help with that public facing of it as well that they can see, well, you know what? Um, the Northeast or the Northwest or certain areas haven't, have performed differently. So, we'll, so at least it becomes more visible as well as the surrounding areas because we know that what happens in Cochrane, Okotoks, Airdrie, it all can be a little different. Yeah. So, 
Anne-Marie, um, thank you so much for the comments. I know that it's not always um, sunshine and lollipops. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, and, and again, I always say, people often say, well, you know, this is a terrible market. What can you do to help? It's actually, it's all about, it's all about where you're sitting in this market. Um, it's all about positioning. I mean, I think um, while I look at things, it might be negative moving down, but there's always an opportunity for anybody in, in either a seller's market, buyer's market, yeah. regardless. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Andy. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. your time. Um, we're going to see a video from a buyer's home, uh, buyer's choice home inspections, and then we're going to have Martin on to talk about some of his unique programs. So stick with us.